Hey guys, welcome back. Orbaum here, bringing you another one of our live tabletop matchups. Today, people, today, we're back here with Nelson. Uh, we are playing Night March versus Buzztales. That is Buzzwell and Ninetales, the brand new Ninetales. And I need you guys to know right now, Buzzwell is back. Buzzwell is back and better than ever. I'm not talking about Baby Buzzwell either. I'm talking about Buzzwell GX. It was so strong in this match. And it's just overall a really cool deck. So I can't wait to show you guys everything about it. Before we get into the video, don't forget to drop a like. Uh, subscribe, share all the good jazz if you guys want to see more tabletop matchups. And now is the day I need you guys to comment down below what decks you want to see me play in the future. I had a lot of people say they want to see me play Macargo. Um, I'm going to also get, and I have all the other decks built that I want you guys to see as well. So I'm actually really excited to show you guys. But on the left is me, of course, Orbom Matt. By the way, once again, shout out to you guys that are interested in purchasing the Orbom Matt. I do appreciate it, especially right now. Uh, but I am playing the Night March list. Now, in this Night March list, I might do a profile in the future. Um, this is Kazuki uh, Kazuki Kubo's uh, 22nd place uh, Lost March. No, I keep saying Night March. Lost March list. Um, and then my opponent, Nelson, is of course playing the third place Buzzrock Tales um, list by Hida, Hidehito Jozaki. By the way, all these deck all these deck lists are on Limitless. If you guys go to Limitless.com, you go to tournaments. Uh, that's where all these deck lists are. But the Lost March deck list isn't there. So I might make a video about Lost March in the in the future that shows off the deck list. Uh, this deck list, uh, I'm I actually don't know where I found this deck list because I found it on Verbank. Somebody posted on Verbank that this is the deck that did well, and uh, it was the picture of the deck. But I didn't save the I didn't save uh, the actual person that posted it. So I do apologize for that. I had the post written down, but I deleted that post by accident. Um, so that's unfortunate. But I did save the picture, so I have the deck list. And I can probably put a link to the deck list as well. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but as you can see, we have Hop Apes. Now Hop Apes are 30 HP Pokemon, and I'm gonna go ahead and play Cynthia here as well. So we both led Lele, so we both have these awkward Lele starts. Uh, <laughs> but I did manage to get three Hop Apes out. Now the reason why I'm trying to focus on getting as many Hop Apes out as possible is for a couple reasons. First things first. Uh, when, it, when they evolve in the skip loom, they have the ability to put both uh, to put the skip loom and the hop in the lost zone. And um, when you do that, you can get a jump lift out of jump luff out of your deck and put them on into your, into your board. And then you can put the other skip loom and uh, you can put the skip loom and hop in the lost zone. That's another way to really put Pokemon in the lost zone. And if you guys don't know what this deck does. Um, it's Lost March attackers. Just like Night March, we have Lost March, but instead of them being in the discard pile, it's for every Pokemon in your Lost Zone that isn't a Prism Star card. So uh, the goal is to get as many Pokemon in the Lost Zone as possible. But unfortunately for me, uh, I was like, look, I have this thing. I, I have this thing in the active. Uh, I'm hoping that he can't he can't goose him up a hop hip and get and knock out two hop hips. But here it's I mean, it's to be expected, right? But I do have a Natu here. Natu is also a Pokemon with a Lost March attack, but it does attack for psychic type, uh, psychic type damage and has 40 HP. So obviously Diancy can make it be knocked out easily, but the uh, at least <laughs> at least I can hit for weakness, right? So we only need like five Pokemon in the Lost Zone, which is not overall going to be too hard because there's this cool Pokemon called Trumbeak. Now Trumbeak, I'm just playing the Trumbeak. You don't play the Trump, uh, the Picket Peck or the, or the, what's it called? Um, or the Trump or the Toucan, that's what's called. Because Trumbeak's ability is when this Pokemon's in your hand, you may put it in the Lost Zone. If you do, you can look at the top card of your opponent's deck, and uh, if it's a supporter card, you may put it in the Lost Zone. So <laughs> that's the goal here. And then we have Professor Elms. This deck does play for Professor Elms' new theory because both the Skip Loom, Natu, and Hopip, and the Alone Vulpix in the deck, they all have 60 HP. And yes, Elm does not say basics. You can actually grab the, the Skip Loom from, the, from your deck. It doesn't have to be a basic Pokemon. So that's why this Lost March deck is so cool because you can spend turn one, get three Hop Hips uh, with one Professor Elms Theory, and then turn two, you can get yourself uh, you can get yourself three Skip Looms, and then put six Pokemon in the Lost Zone and start attacking with uh, with Lost with uh, Jump Luff's Lost March. And then Jump Luff does have free retreat, 70 HP, and can attack for one energy. It does 20 damage for each uh, Pokemon in your Lost Zone. So. Overall, it's just nice to have a free retreater on the board, and ideally, you just attack with Natu, right? That's that's kind of the game plan here. Uh, we also have other cards that can put Pokemon in the Lost Zone. We have Lost Mixer. You can put two cards from your hand into the Lost Zone, and uh, um, if you do, you can draw one card. There's another way to just get, like, maybe maybe in this matchup, right? I'm trying to get as many Jump Luffs and Skip Looms and stuff like that in the Lost Zone because I know I'm not going to be able to attack. But here, I know I'm not taking a knockout. There's no point even attacking. So I'm just going to start using uh, Beacon, get myself a couple, couple Trump Beaks, maybe try to start digging for a DCE so I can attack with Natu because Natu's attack only takes a DCE while the, uh, while the, 
um, Jump Puff's attack is one grass energy. So obviously, you know, you need to make sure that you have the right cards for the right matchup. Unfortunately, this deck only plays three DCEs, and I have found that that's been an issue, especially considering how good, uh, how good Buzzwell is right now. So I'm sure that even the builder of the deck would probably say that he would like to put in a fourth DCE and maybe even a fourth Natu in this deck uh, if he were to play in the future, just because of how clutch the Natu is in this matchup. Being because like the Jump Off can Oko the um, the the Lycan Rocks if they have five Pokemon in the Lost Zone, and then the Natus can Oko the uh, Buzzwell with five Pokemon in the Lost Zone. And that's not even considering Choice Band. So I think the matchup is really, really cool. Um, so definitely something I'm going to try working in the future. And I, honestly, I might even consider playing a Marshadow just to put like one Natu in the discard pile and attack with uh, attack with Marshadow in the Zorak matchup and just completely remove the Choice Bands. But I, we'll, see, we'll see what happens in the future. I'm going to definitely build my own version of the deck and... Uh, see how I like it because after my testing there are a couple there's definitely some changes I want to play I did catch I did get a counter at catcher I'm gonna put a Rangaroo down because this deck I, I, I it's been notorious for me running out of cards especially since I discard a lot using cards like Lost Mixer as you can see draw one card that's two more Pokemon in the Lost Zone so right there that's already that should be enough to take knockouts on everything as long as I'm hitting for weakness no Guzman in hand I could play a Lele but I am afraid of Lycanroc I don't want my opponent to be taking two prizes off me off off multiple Pokemon right so I could Lele and try to knock out a Rock Ruff to get Guzma and knock out Rock Ruff because there's no way he can actually uh, knock me out the following turn. I, I actually I do think this deck plays counter gain, so he might have the possibility to do that, but I'm not too sure off the top of my head. Uh, but I think his Buzz Tails is, is really cool. Oh, we have to talk about Nine Tails. So if you guys don't know what Nine Tails does, if when you evolve it from your hand, um, you can get two item cards from your disc from your deck into your hand. So it's just essentially you play it on Vulpix, your opponent's usually not knocking out Vulpix, and if you are worried about not getting Vulpix knocked out, you just get multiple Vulpix down. Uh, Vulpix gives you Beacon, which is always a good attack, and then whenever uh, you can get those Nine Tails into your hand by using Beacon, and uh, once you evolve into it, you just grab your Beast Rings or your Switches or whatever you need in that particular matchup, right? So there's a lot of cool stuff that comes out of it. So I am playing uh, Lost Mixer again, and I did get the DCE. But unfortunately, I can't be attaching and retreating as much as I want to because I actually don't have that many energies in this deck. This deck will only play about four, ener four grass energies. But I do want to say huge shout outs to our sponsors once again because I did forget to say it. And I really need to get used to saying that because it's like, it's, it's like hard to remember. It's, it's a lot harder to remember on whenever I'm recording post matchups because I'm not using OBS, right? Because in OBS, it's like on my thing. But once again, huge shout outs to our sponsors like Guardians Gaming. They'll be selling. I'm going to be doing a 100 code Celestial Storm giveaway soon if you guys are interested. I did use counter catcher here uh, just because I don't have a way to retreat this Vulpix. I do want to get something stuck in the active, right? Uh, so, uh, and if I knock out Diancie, it's pretty good for Natu because uh, it's pretty good for, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good for Natu because then Buzzwell has no way to Oko Natu. So maybe I can get, knock out this Diancie, but I just want to take six prizes. That's my game plan here, right? So I'm trying to put both of us in this really weird position to where the whoever gets Guzma first will probably end up being the winner. I'm going to attach my grass energy and I'm going to use beacon here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and probably get more Trump Beaks. Just keep throwing things in the lost zone while we can. So two Trump Beaks maybe disrupt my opponent. Trump Beak has been pretty clutch. I have been able to get rid of a lot of like I know that there was one game where I got rid of a Lily. So my opponent wasn't able to top deck a Lily for turn one, which was kind of lit. Um, there's some games where I just completely get rid of their draw supporters. And more importantly, I had games where I got rid of Guzmas. So uh, overall, I think I think this deck is pretty cool. I do like Lost March a lot, but I'm I'm just because of the nature of the deck being low HP, like below 80 HP is kind of big because then Blacephalon can do can do things. <laughs> uh, Blacephalon can Oko it, Oko everything in the deck. And uh, like you can always just set up one not Blacephalon, I'm sorry. Naganadel can Oko everything in the deck, while Blacephalon can Oko things like Lele's. Uh, so it's actually pretty interesting. You do have Psychic Weakness, so Natu can knock you on return, but you could probably stream... You have more Naganadels, and you could probably streamline better, as far as attacking goes, than a Natu can, right? So... See, I'm so hesitant about attaching this, because I want to attach and retreat to take a knockout, but I have only three DCEs in the deck. So if I sit here and just keep... If I just sit here and keep... Uh, What's it called? Uh, if I attach and retreat, I'm not going to have enough energies to win the game because then I'll literally run out of energies. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of both of those. It doesn't really matter. Like I could have done it one at a time. Maybe do uh, maybe do uh, one this turn or one next turn. 
I don't really feel like it's necessary. I am trying to thin my hand down, which is why I did that to draw off a Rangru. And uh, obviously, I only looked at this with the one card because it goes right back in the deck, right? There's no point. You don't shuffle, so it doesn't change anything. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just beacon again. Keep thinning my deck. Try to get myself a Guzma so I can win this game. Uh, of course, my opponent can get Lycanroc, but Lycanroc doesn't matter if he can't attack, right? So he's also trying to find a Guzma. Uh, he, this deck does play a skateboard, so he could manually attach and, and get a, and find an escape board, right? That's another possibility. Uh, I do have a Lost Mixer. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Hopip and another one of these boys, uh, Elm's New Theory. And that's another Pokemon in the Lost Zone as well. So, I mean, we are just loading up with Pokemon in the Lost Zone. I think that's like 10 Pokemon right now, so we're hitting for 200 damage. Uh, so right now weakness doesn't even matter. I think it's like yeah, it's exactly ten. Uh, but like then we're back in this awkward position to where I have these three, all three DCs in my deck in my hand right now. But even if I were to play one down, I wouldn't be able to draw. And I'm still like, do I want to retreat? But I don't want to retreat because I'm gonna have to stretch one of these Natus at some point. I need to be attacking with Natus, and especially since I'm assuming he's probably, I'm, I'm going off the assumption my opponent's gonna Guzma first, right? He's playing the Sia to get himself a Beast Energy, and uh, I think that's it because Diancie's the only other Prism card in this deck. So. I mean, just another card to thin, he can attach it. Um, now he can even knock out Natus if I do knock out Diancy. But yeah, we're just playing the Guzma game right now. I do have another Lost Mixer. I can get rid of the, both of the Pokemon in my... I can get rid of both Pokemon in my hand, including a Natu. It's kind of risky, but like I said, if I'm playing the Stretcher game, I'm trying to attack with three Natus this game. So one in my hand uh, gets knocked out. Or not the one in my hand, uh, two on the board. One of them gets knocked out, and then uh, I can stretch them back, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do it. And yeah, that's another, that is 12 Pokemon in the Lost Zone now. It's 240 damage with Lost March. Uh, unfortunately, it's just because we're both like chilling here waiting to find a Guzma. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play my Choice Band down and I'm going to draw one off of Rangaroo. Did I get it? I got Cynthia. So now I'm going to play the Cynthia because I need to find Guzma. And this is a weird part about Japanese decklists, right? A lot of these Japanese decklists are only playing two or three Guzmas in their deck. Uh, that's something I personally disagree with because you're kind of like, I mean, okay, look, I understand the concept, right? And I do that sometimes in my stage two decks because my stage two decks is all about setting up your Pokemon to win. Uh, and then Guzma gets in the way sometimes, right? But um, in, in like... In, uh, I can attach for turn, so I'm probably gonna start attaching to a Natu here, so I don't have to dig for DC. Uh, yeah, that way, like, he, I can, I can, uh, I can probably attach an energy later, but I know those are my, I know these are like my last grass energies, right? So I'm just gonna burn this card in my hand, uh, double heads whenever it doesn't matter, because there's no more Pokemon in my deck. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's actually no more Pokemon in my deck. I think that's the, yeah, that's all I have left in my deck, guys. But Guzma is there, and so is Stretcher. So we have what we need. We just gotta find it. Uh, we have the Guzman hand actually, that's really cool. Okay, so the Cynthia ended up becoming a pretty nice play, so we just gotta wait, and hopefully my opponent does not draw Guzma here, because if he doesn't, then we have a, I mean, we are we are still behind. He's gonna play Kikui here, uh, Kikui just to help him draw up more, but uh, that means no Guzma. But we have to take six prizes before he takes four, which is definitely a possibility, right? He has a Lele, nine tails, two buzzwolves. The path is there for me. I have two Guzmas in hand right now, and if he ever pulls up an attacker, we get to take a knockout on it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and knock him out with Jump Luff. Like I guess it doesn't really matter in the end of the day who I who I take a knockout on him with. Um, maybe attacking with Natu would be better. But Jump Luff can't be Okoed by just a regular Buzzle, and he's gonna be able to B string here, which is fine. It doesn't really change anything. Uh, we got more Pokemon in our hand, more Ultra Balls. So we'll see what happens here. Like even though he can B string. Uh, at the end of the day, our game plan is to just try to knock out three GX Pokemon in time, right? So if he if he attacks me with a Buzzwool, then we're in a good position because we just attack with Natu, take a Revenge knockout, and then we use our last Guzma for game. So that's the game plan. That's the game plan I have right now is to force him to attack me with one of these GX attackers. Now, one thing that this decklist does not play that I feel like would be really nice for some matchups is like a one one of Baby Buzz. It doesn't even, I don't think this deck plays a single Baby Buzzle. And a Baby Buzzle would have been really, really good for this matchup in particular, uh, just to help him out a little bit. Now, of course, Buzzle does have an inherently really good matchup against Lost March because Jet Punch is so devastating in a Lost March matchup. Uh, but, and also, it can probably take more knockouts than Lost March can keep up with because Lost March, you do need to put a lot of Pokemon in the discard pile before you start taking Okos, and it is just inherently inconsistent, right? So, uh, but I, I'm, we're just looking up cards just to double check all the rulings and stuff like that. But uh, having one baby Buzzwell would help you in these particular situations, right? So one, two, he's just going to go ahead and attach 
three energies there off of his two B strings to his bench, right? He could get a fourth one, but he wants to be able to draw into energies in case he needs to retreat or maybe even attach to a rock rough, which is why he's choosing to not attach all four because it's not, there's no point, right? I mean, there's, there's absolutely no point attaching all four. Uh, so he has a Guzman hand too. Uh, if he wants to knock out a Lele, he can. In the, I guess, I guess that's what he's doing. Uh, oh, but what he's doing actually, this is actually a really interesting play, right? Instead of knocking out the Lele, he's actually gonna start jet punching. Um, that way, that way he can try to knock out these Natus while they're on the bench before they become a problem. Because uh, there's no point in taking this knockout. Because like I said before, if he does, if he does knock me out, then I just come in and take another knockout, and then I Guzma for game. So he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to just give me the opportunity to just have a thing in the active right like he doesn't want to just let me uh take a revenge knockout because then that kind of solidifies the game for him and this is why i love playing with nelson because nelson is such a good player uh, uh this is this is a play i didn't even think of that he could do and it could have potentially won him the game if i didn't have guzman hand or even this dc to help me retreat uh i think i'm just going to guzman instead uh, although I do think it's probably my best interest to attach a DC and retreat because that way I still have the game winning Guzma. So, I mean, either play kind of works out in the end, but yeah, I think this is the best play, right? Because I do want the game winning Guzma. I don't want to use the Guzma unless it is literally for me to win the game. Uh, yeah, I'm going to attack with this one, obviously, because it's going to be knocked out next turn anyways. But yeah, uh... Because he went out into his buzzwell, and I'm forcing him to take a knockout here, I think there's no way I can lose game one. So game one was really, really grindy, right? <laughs> it was super grindy because in the end of the day, it was just both of us drawing and hoping for the best. <laughs> but uh, you can see how you can see how I kind of maneuvered myself and tried to play as smart as I could with my energies to make sure that. I, my opponent would not be able to win this game, but by evolving into Lycanroc, at the end of the day, Guzma still wins me the game because I just Guzma up something. Uh, but yeah, and there we go. We just go ahead and Guzma the uh, <laughs> the Lycanroc for game and knock it out with Jump Buff. So that's gonna be game one. Let's go ahead and move on to game two here. Uh, overall, I think that I think the deck is really cool. Uh, but I mean, like, uh, I'm not I, I'm not trying to be biased, right? Like, I think Lost March is still a cool deck by in every mean i think lost march is still a cool deck and still a good deck uh but because of the fact that i've been playing a lot of blacephalon and uh the decks that are really really good right now have a pretty good matchup at least like a 60 40 matchup versus lost march like blacephalon uh not gonna delve by itself can sweep blacephalon and you set up three you keep attaching energies to them from the discard pile you never put them in the lost zone either so uh you don't have to worry about running out of blacephalons and then you can just drop uh if your opponent if your opponent, or you don't have to worry about Noggin Dells. That's so rough for me to say. <laughs> uh, you don't ever have to worry about running out of Noggin Dells because you play three, right? And uh, if your opponent does take enough knockouts, you just start B stringing onto Nagas or even to your Blacephalons to take GX knockouts if they ever played on Lele. Uh, and Buzzwell, Jet Punch by itself can win them the games most of the time. And uh, in uh, Zoark, Zoark has 210 HP and resists Psychic. So you need to be attacking with Jump Luff, which is a little bit harder to do. Uh, and like you need to find choice band and stuff like that and it's not the easiest thing to get 10 pokemon in the loss zone at all it's cool it's easy enough to get like four five six especially if you get like an amazing turn with like four hop ips on board and you have like every pokemon in the pokemon line in your hand at the same time which is incredibly difficult to have by the way he's playing the turn one lacia getting him both uh beast energy and diancy he can also he also used the uh, what's it called um the thing <laughs> brooklyn hill to get uh to get himself a a rock rough and i make a miss i make a misplay this game guys i completely forget that i can use brooklyn hill to grab vulpix so you're gonna see me completely just completely forget about that and uh, i'm probably gonna use i don't know if it was in this game or the game that ended up not being recorded right but there was there was a game that i did that and i used elm to get the vulpix instead like an idiot that's gonna happen it's fine <laughs> Don't worry about it. But this game I do remember because I'm a genius and I probably shouldn't even talked about that because now I look like a fool, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna use Elm here probably to get three hop ips because I have two timer balls in hand and I'm probably just gonna go for it next turn. But once again, just sitting here hoping he can't knock out all my hop ips at the same time. <laughs> but if I can get at least two on board, right? And I have the entire Pokemon line and that's what you're seeing me do right here. I'm trying to count out to see if I have the entire Pokemon line. It's very, very rare when that happens. But if this, if I can get 
at least two jump puffs this game it's gonna be a lot better than me than not having two jump puffs because that's already just right there four pokemon in my in my loss zone which is just i'm just one away from having the five that i need so to win the game of course uh, or at least to take knockouts on a bunch of his pokemon easily so i'm just gonna go ahead and just get all three hop hips out uh and I could attach, but but whenever these hop hips go in the lost zone, all the cards attached to them get lost zone as well. There's skip limbs, I should say. So there's you never attach to a hop hip or a skip limb because you're losing the energy if you do that. So I'm just I'm just thinking out loud, but I think I'm just going to pass here. This is the cool thing about me and Nelson is that we always talk out our plays and explain like the risk and rewards versus each play because I am essentially giving up two prizes if my opponent uh, can find a Guzma or or like an escape board or something like that. He has a lot of ways to put this Lele on the bench and uh but yeah I'm yeah so what I'm gonna do is actually because of the fact that he has a skateboard I'm just gonna go ahead and beacon here get myself two skip looms uh because no matter what I should be getting two jump ups next turn so he could always like judge me or something like that but I know that for sure he can't knock out four hop ups at the same time he can only knock out two so this is, feels like a pretty safe play and I still have two timer balls right so if, if he does only knock out one hop up then we are still pretty safe so he can always use his uh his brooklet, get himself a buzzwall, attach a beast energy. And, oh, actually, with beast energy, he can knock out uh, the vulpix and the hopip at the same time. So I know that he has these these op these options, right? And I know he has Layla in hand, which gets some Guzma, but he can just Guzma anyways. <laughs> it doesn't change anything. Unfortunately, I am still losing two hopips. But you know what? This is this is what happens when you play Lost March, right? You just kind of have to go for it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick. And we can always counter catcher, maybe knock out a Rockruff, maybe a Diancie. We'll see what happens. But he has beast energy, so I do want to knock out this boy right away. If we can find, uh, if we can find two, or no, if we can find one Trumbeak, right? And we can get DCE not to right now. We do take a knockout because not jump Puff does have free retreat. So that's going to be my game plan, right? Just try to get a knockout here. We have the DCE, but we don't have a not to. And here's where I was thinking to myself, maybe just maybe I messed up. <laughs> maybe I should have gotten not to and expected this to happen. But like I got one head. So look at that. So just enough to get my one Trump beak. <laughs> uh, maybe I should have got a not to instead of three Trump beak, uh, three. But if I didn't do if I didn't get all the hop hips, then I wouldn't be able to have four Pokemon on the lost one right now unless I did really, really well off of that, uh, off of that boy, uh, off of that, off of those Tyrant Balls, which I didn't. I got one out of four heads, so it is unfortunate. And uh, I'm debating if I want to get rid of this card. Uh, yeah, I do. It's going to be, I think that's a Lily. No, that's a, that's a Kikui. So we're getting rid of his Kikui, which is good because he, uh, I mean, that could be good. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to try to draw one off of this Oranguru. Although it won't really matter in the end of the day. Oh, we got Cynthia. I guess that's cool. <laughs> but right now we're only hitting for 100. And I guess I could have got rid of Diancie. If I found if I find a Grass Energy, of course. Because if I get rid of Diancie, sure, it's only one prize. And that's kind of not what you want to do. But at least that my opponent wouldn't be able to hit 80 without using Kikui's. This deck does play three Kikui's, though. Which, oh my god, this hand is just atrocious. All the Pokemon. <laughs> all the Pokemon and... Uh, a nest ball that is unnecessary right now. We're probably not attacking this turn because there's no real point in attacking. There's a six Pokemon, and we did get rid of two supporters there. It's a Cynthia, and they go in the lost zone. Uh, we're gonna catch this later. It doesn't really change anything because this deck doesn't play Pal Pad, but it is something to keep in mind. And I am gonna go ahead and retreat and start using Beacon here. We're gonna find those Natus, man. We're gonna find that. We're gonna put those Natus down, and we're gonna try to find DCEs. We're gonna get Lele as well to get Guzmas. I need to knock out these Buzzwolves, man. If I'm not taking two prize knockouts, I'm definitely not doing a service in this matchup, which is why you didn't see me attack. attack attack the Diancie because in the end of the day I am really really trying to take two prizes to win this game before my opponent can um let's see oh, I don't know I'm just just chilling all right I got Lele and Natu assume my opponent can draw oh yeah they're just double checking Trumpik because they kind of feel like Trumpik is super broken which it is it's a pretty broken card <laughs> just put the Pokemon in the lost zone immediately like why I'm surprised. Uh, there's this deck. Um, oh man, I shouldn't probably talk. I shouldn't talk about it. I might talk about it in the video when I've recorded. I guess yeah, I'll just talk about it in the video. But it's about one of the decks that we're gonna be recording soon. So I'm not gonna even mention it right now. Uh, I'm actually gonna write it down so I remember to say it later. Uh, he did. What did he get? He got a Vulpix so he can get Nine Tails after I take a knockout on him. So that he's just preparing himself. 
All right, there we go. It, the note has been made. I hate typing because Pokemon names don't actually exist. So he's gonna go ahead and knock out a, a jump bluff here, unfortunately. And I'm assuming he's putting 30 damage on the Vulpix because that way he can take a knockout on it later. But as you can see, like the aggression with this deck is so strong. Uh, and that's why I feel like, like it's really hard for Lost Marsh to survive in this environment because Zoar can Oko everything and Zoar has too much HP to be knocked out and Zoar plays a bunch of healing, like Ace Rolls and stuff like that. He's putting on the Jump Bluff instead, which is, uh, I mean, I agree. I, I don't disagree with that. I think the Vulpix would have been good because I would have guaranteed him a knockout later with another Jet Punch. But I mean, overall, it's not a bad play. All right, we gotta find DCE here. So that's the game plan. Uh, so we have, I think we have a Draw Sporter in hand. Uh, yeah, we have Cynthia. So maybe we can find the DCE. It's like there's only three in the deck, right? And it's, it's always that there's, there's like slight discomfort between having three DCEs and four DCEs in the deck. And uh, <laughs> there's going to be so many games where I just don't find the cards because of it. Um, so I'm thinking what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm probably going to play Guzma and just knock out Lycanroc while I can. Because I can't guarantee that I'm going to find DCE. Um, so I'm going to retreat manually and then Guzma, right? And then, yeah, Guzma up the Lycanroc. And uh, I know that there's like a slight conversation about this because we feel like we misplayed that, but we didn't actually. He, he realized where the misplay came from, yeah. So there we go. So we're just going to go ahead and take our two prizes here because like I said, I want to take two prizes every turn. I think there was also a DCE prize, which is another reason why I took knockouts there instead of Shuffle Drew because I'm, I was banking on getting a DCE off the prizes as well. But don't quote me on that because I actually don't remember if that was the case. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's the beast rings. Here comes the threats, the big boy threats. Uh... Dude, iPhones are so lame. I shouldn't say that though, because like, I mean, they're cool phones, but man, sometimes sometimes it's really hard to do some typing. <laughs> uh, anyways, that aside, I, I have an iPhone right now and I, I'm liking it. I, I don't hate it. I've, I've used both phones, Android and iPhone, and I'm not really sure which one I prefer the most. So like, I don't know. <laughs> I want to get the new iPhone. So I haven't had a new phone in a while. I'm probably going to get a new phone soon. We'll see what happens. Uh, I know I have to get a new phone service, so I might get a new phone during that time. I don't know why I'm talking about this. We're playing a game right now. This is right now, like obvious things are happening. He did attach an escape board to his Lele, so he has free retreat. He's going to take a knockout here and then put 30 on the on the Vulpix. So overall, it actually was a good play because he mapped it out really well because that's my boy and he's a genius. So, uh, Okay, let's see what we can do though. We need to take a knockout here with Natu. Uh, so we need to find a DC, right? That's the game plan is to find a DC. We have all these Pokemon in our hands. If only we had some Lost Mixer, man, some Lost Mixers. Um, we could always counter catcher just for the sake of getting it out of my deck, right? Like I don't want to keep the one that has, well, I guess, I guess, is that the one with the beast energy? I don't think it actually has the beast energy, but whatever. I just want to thin the card, the deck by one so I can potentially draw into a DC easier, right? So that's the game plan. We just need to find a DC here. DCs, please. Because Lele is just chilling. Yeah. Lele is just chilling and can be knocked out in one hit. I want to knock out these things that can Oko <laughs> Lele in one hit. I'm scared. I'm super scared. Oh, by the way, if you guys don't know what Ninetales attacks are, uh, for a fairy, which is why they play you energies, right? For a fairy, colorless, it hits for 70 with 30 snipe. Oh, we found it. Oh, thank God. <laughs> we found two. Uh, and for the, his GX attack and ult can, uh, uh, if your opponent's active Pokemon is a Ultra Beast, it just gets knocked out. No damage counters, so things like, uh, uh, as far as we're aware, things like, uh, what's it called, Zerka Tree can still be knocked out, even if it does have like a unit energy attached, because it does play unit energies, no fairy energies in this deck. So, I'm thinking about using my uh, Lost Mixer, just to thin my deck by one. Uh, so I do need to find another not to, right? Because I want to be able to draw. So here's my, here's the thing, right? Oh, I remember this game clearly because this game was really whack. Okay, so here's what I want to do. Because I know he's going to knock me out next turn with Buzzwole. I really, really, really want to get down a not to for the following turn so I can just slap a DC onto it and take a knockout next turn. So here I'm actually going to uh, Lost Mixer, put a, uh, get rid of the Lele in my hand, which is like really risky, but I feel like the only way I can guarantee the game next turn is to get a not to. So I need to find a Natu right now. Unfortunately, I whipped the Natu. And uh, you're going to see here <laughs> how sad I am after this next turn. But I can't. I, I don't know what I'm going to get off the prizes, right? All I know is that if I don't have a Natu next turn, I can't 
guarantee the game next turn unless I top deck the Natu and get a Guzma somehow, like off the prizes or like some combination of those cards off the prizes, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and burn this thing in my hand because I don't really need it anymore. There's no more basic grass in the deck as far as, as, far, as, far as I'm aware. Uh, but there is eight Pokemon in the Lost Zone, which means if we can put one more Pokemon in the Lost Zone or use the Choice Band, we can knock out Lele. But we find the Ultra Ball and the Trumbeak, which means we can knock out Lele now. And the Ultra... And, oh, man. If we had the Lele in this hand, we would be able to Ultra Ball for Natu. Um, uh, play down the Lele, Guzma, and win the game next turn. But because I didn't know what I was going to get off my prizes and because I was like trying my best to win the game there because I wanted to make sure I can try to get down a second Natu down by finding another Ultra Ball or even finding a Stretcher or a Natu or something like that, right? Um, because I had no way to retreat. I can't attach a DC and retreat manually because I don't have a free retreat on my bench because he knocked out both Jump Bluffs. And uh, me trying to dig for a Natu ended up losing me the game because I got my two prizes and they weren't actually, uh, and they were exactly what I needed for me to win the next turn if I had Lele in my hand for Guzma. Now I could always top deck Guzma or Stretcher or like anything like that, right? Like. I could top deck any of those cards, but I did not top deck any of those cards. So now he's just a Guzma away from winning the game, as we can all see. I can Ultra Ball for Natu here. I can thin my hand as much as possible. I can Ultra Ball, play the Trumbeak down, throw down a Natu, attach a DC to it, and then draw three off a of Ranguru and hope for the best. Uh, I am considering attaching, uh, which I think I do end up attaching because like at, at, at the end of the day, it's super risky to find this stuff, and it's just so low... Like the chance are so the chance is so low, but I'm gonna try it anyways. We're gonna see if I can find the Natu. Yeah, I do find the Natu here, and we're gonna draw. We're gonna draw one. I wish I checked my last card, because uh, I don't remember if he wins next turn or not. Because I'm banking off the fact that he doesn't have a Guzma. He has played a couple Guzmas, and uh, he has a full bench, right? So he can't play a Lele for Guzma. So if he doesn't have a Guzma in his hand right now, because uh, he can't, oh, we we find the stretcher. Um, but the Lele is in the Lost Zone, right? So never mind, I forgot, I forgot about that. Yeah, but with the Lele being in the Lost Zone, I can't even stretch it for the Lele. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and stretch it, get a second Natu down, and just pass here. And if he has Guzma, he wins. But if he doesn't have Guzma, I win. But he does have the Guzma. So as you can see, like it was such a heartbreaking game to lose because I knew, I knew what I needed, but... I couldn't draw into the second. If I just drew into the second Natu, all of that would have been okay. And I have multiple ways to get the second Natu. I don't even think I played a supporter that turn. So I could have just even found like Professor Elms. I had so many different ways to get Natu, but I didn't find it at all. And it was very, very, very sad. Uh, but as you can see, that's the deck. I kind of like the Night March deck list. So I'm going to, tr I might edit in a picture of the deck list. Oh man. Sure. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. I don't I don't need to make like a whole uh I don't know. It's tough. Cause I like to explain the reasons why things are in, in the in the deck. Oh whatever. I'll just I'll just throw a picture of the image I found of the deck list here if I can remember. If I don't remember, then I'll probably make a video. But hopefully I remember, right? <laughs> in my editing process. Um that's gonna be the deck list, guys. Once again, shout out to Nelson. We are gonna have a game three soon. So don't worry about that. It's coming. Uh, and because that way we actually have a real tiebreaker to make. This video is really cool because I didn't have to like edit around too much. I literally just threw together the decks, the matches, and that was it. Like I had to do my usual, like make the screen look prettier. Cause like it's so hard to record, right? Cause like the lighting is so dull unless you have like a professional lighting system. I just record in stores. But uh, thanks to my, the magic of editing, <laughs> we've managed to get like good enough lighting and good enough, or good enough color scheme. To adjust with the lighting and all that good jazz so that's really cool don't forget to drop a like if you haven't already let me know in the comments down below what decks you want to see me play next uh, don't forget to check out our sponsors at guardian gaming of course they have awesome prices for awesome codes so if you guys need any codes uh get ready for the next set all that good jazz don't forget to check them out they are a great website you guys have been supporting them like crazy too which i do appreciate it does it makes me look good and that's awesome i like looking good you know what i'm saying um, if you guys, once again, like I mentioned in the previous video, I haven't uploaded the previous video. Actually, I did upload it this morning, so I did double check the comments. But if you guys are interested in buying a mat, please let me know in the comments down below. If I get enough people that are interested, I will put the mat up for sale once again. Um, I think that's going to be it. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, share all the good jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.